All right, time now for perspective. Today, today's guest is award-winning African film director Jean-Pierre Bécalot from Cameroon. Welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, um, this weekend, Paris's K. Branley Museum uh, giving a screening of a selection of his films. I uh, want to begin by asking you. Last weekend, Cameroon held a presidential election. Votes still being counted, but 85-year-old incumbent Paul Bia looks set to win a seventh term, but you endorsed uh, Maurice Canto. Why did this candidate appeal to you? Okay, first, actually, we signed a cultural pact because since 2011, I've been proposing to the candidates to kind of commit to culture. And uh, I had like 10 points and nobody signed in 2011. And this time, Maurice Canto is the one who signed. Culture in Cameroon fund is funded at zero 0.08 percent. Yeah, virtually that, non-existent, yeah. So we are actually pushing culture and Maurice Camto signed said I'll commit on culture. So that's really the first um, reason why I kind of commit to kind of join him. A sort of candidate of change. So in that sense it looks like Paul Bia is going to win a seventh term. He's already been in power winning? for 36 years. <laughs> winning because now yeah. can you imagine somebody organizing a game, playing the game at the same time choosing the referee, the, which stadium, the day, and everything. At the end, obviously, the system is not democratic. So it's like, uh, um, actually, yesterday, the other day, they found uh, fake observers saying they're from Transparency International. So you know very well that this is a system that is there to stay. So what does that mean? If it's seven more years of beer, what does that mean for filmmakers in Cameroon? Not just for filmmakers. I think we'll have migration. Because right now you should know that Cameroon is in, in war uh, with the Anglophone, like 300,000 people displaced. And I think the depression for young people, for hope, might even make one million people going away. Because that's really what's going to happen. Migration will be the consequence. And I think we should, when you look at the country today, how the country is like completely paralyzed uh, because of mismanagement, I think it will really be a drama. And, and your films have kind of touched on the hypocrisy in politics. They have this humor in them. There, there's satire, but there's something socially poignant in there. Uh, you're also trying to dispel these stereotypes that people might have about Africa. What are some of those stereotypes? But I think, uh, obviously, um, I mean, obviously, the other movies actually are showing the stereotypes. I mean, watch television, you'll see all the stereotypes all over the world, actually. Obviously, you know, you can, people don't exist, really. And I think that's a real feeling. You feel like Africa is animals and nature and people, whatever, when they're good, they're Maasai or pygmies, primitives. But I think at the same time, we need to kind of also express ourselves in a way that we are considered and with, based on our opinion and our way we see the world and we see ourselves. For me, that's really what's very really important. You know? and, and, and I play with the past for sure, but I also play with the future. So I think Africa has been completely like free, frozen you know, in the past that is always kind of nostalgic, the present that is ugly, wars, and the future that is only bad diseases killing the whole continent. So I think we need to kind of get out of this framing where we end up, we are actually becoming what we were kind of defined as, you know? Yeah, shifting the narrative uh, in a way. Uh, so these perceptions are not just about outsiders on Africa, but also Africans on themselves. Mm. Yes, I think it's very important. Uh, I was going back to these elections, I was saying when, what, how you feel, what they call the Stockholm Syndrome, where people are holding on this Identifying with their, their yes, kidnappers. Because the, the, the guy doesn't do anything in 36 years. The country is collapsing. But at the same time, people are holding on him because they don't have anything else. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the only thing they have. And they want him again. But even with time, you know, he will have to go. So people need, she need to get prepared to change. And that's really, really a challenge. And well, let's talk about your career then. Uh, you span genres, science fiction, thrillers, fake documentaries. I don't think you've done a romantic comedy yet, but you <laughs> did do a steamy horror political uh, uh, thriller, Seignant. Uh How do you uh, view yourself as a, a filmmaker when you're beginning a new project? Do you know which direction it will take? Or as you're writing it, is it sort of a discovery process? I really think now when I look back, I really didn't have a kind of clear plan for my career. You know, we all dream. You know, I was awarded in Cannes at 25 years old. I thought I will be uh, like Tarantino because we got the same award. I mean, we got nominated for the British Award at the same time. 
And then he, he goes back home in America, me, I go back home to Cameroon. Obviously, there's no cinema in Cameroon, and he's in America. So you should really understand that now my career should be different. I should adapt to what I am. You know, I shouldn't run away from it, but I should embrace whatever, you know, I have the here and make the best out of it. So me, that, that's how it happened. So I'll still continue the same way. I don't have a clear plan, but I look at where I am. I feel like what would be exciting? I like projects that are discovery for me. I don't like to do things I've, I've done before. Mm. I like, you know, when there's something new. Uh, I just come back from Argentina, and before I was in Colombia, I'm like, Latin America could be nice. So now, how do we bridge this thing with Africa? So I like to explore, really. To explore, sir. So, so real quickly, one last question. Mm -hmm. When the people go to view your films this weekend, they're airing Saturday and Sunday at K. Brandley Museum, what do you hope they leave with? I really hope they feel that, you know, the cinema they have been watching that is commercial, you know, is not enough, you know. I think that's what I wish, really. I wish that people should know that the space of cinema is larger than what they have kind of been uh, programmed, let's say, you know, to, to watch and like. What they're familiar with. Challenging yeah. the status quo, Jean-Pierre Bacalou, thank you very much. We'll be checking out that uh, retrospective on his career at Paris' K. Branley Museum. Thank you. Time now once again for a reminder of our headlines. The destruction of Hurricane Michael compared to a bomb across Florida. The panhandle buildings have collapsed. At least six people were killed and the toll could rise further as rescuers search through the debris. All right, stay tuned. Up next, France 24's Rob Parsons speaks to the Israeli Minister for Regional Cooperation.